move to this virtual prayer meeting. It is also my singular pleasure to welcome to the pulpit of the virtual prayer ministry, our guest speaker. Uh, Dr. Clifford Main is a native of Liberia in West Africa, but he is now based in the United States. He has a very colorful um, and interesting bio, which I will, uh, I hope I will have the uh, ability to unfold to you throughout the week, because we don't have time on any single morning to, to fully uh, tell you his story. But for this morning, suffice to say that Dr. Main has served the Northeastern Conference of Seventh-day Adventists in the United States of America for 30 years. And as of this past Sunday, the 26th of September, he has assumed, um, he accepted to serve in the role of stewardship director for that conference. Um, like I said, Dr. Main's life is a story of God's grace. And over the next few days, I will share bits of that with you. Dr. Main, welcome to the virtual 5 a.m. prayer meeting. I don't know exactly where you are joining us from. Uh, I don't know what time it is there uh, where you are, but we are glad that you have accepted the invitation to minister to us this morning. And we look forward to you sharing what God has entrusted to you. And so um, we would like to hand over this, the mic to you, Dr. Main, and pray that God will speak to you through us. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much. It is my singular pleasure to be with all of my brothers and sisters in the motherland. As you know that I'm from Liberia, West Africa. I live in New York State. More specifically, I live in New York City. So it is, it is my pleasure to be with you on this. Uh, it's about 11.06 over here. I understand it's morning for you, the six hours difference between all of us. But look at what God has done. He has flattened the world in the, in the world in a way where we can stay from our living room and communicate with one another and even fellowship with one another. This is huge. Perhaps this is what Jesus talked about when he said, go into all the world. Now we can do this from our very living room. Again, I want to thank you for the privilege and uh, that you have given me to be with you and to share with you uh, during your prayer ministry. The other day when the, my brother, uh, Dr. Sekna Janssen was uh, your guest speaker, I came on a few times myself and uh, I'm sure, I, I'm not sure if Dr. Janssen is on, but I know quite a few of my friends and some of my members are on and I want to welcome each and every one of them. And I want to welcome all the virtual people who are here. Hopefully through this week, God will unpack some deep stuff that will change the way we talk, the way we pray, the way we live our lives. So without any further ado, I'll let you uh, go very quickly to the word. Uh, let me see here if I can get my thing. As you know, our, our theme for this entire week, I understand we're doing this every night uh, up until every night for me and every morning for you, up until Friday night for me and Saturday morning for you. So hopefully uh, this will be a beautiful ride where we all get acquainted with one another. And one of these days, we look forward to seeing each other in person. All right. Our theme for consideration this uh, week is made for more. Made for more. Uh, let us pray. Our Father and our God, speak through these lips of clay and touch the hearts of your children across this globe by way of this platform tonight. And by the time you are done with us, oh Lord, may each of us walk away knowing that we have been in the presence of almighty God. Thank you in Jesus' name. All right. 
made for more, but tonight we're going to deal with the intention of creation, the intention of creation. Honor the theme made for more, the intention, the intentions of creation. Let us go to the very first book of the Bible, and that's Genesis. And verse one says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Then you jump to verse number 26, say, and God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Then we'll go to verse 28. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. The intention of creation. Creation did not just happen by a big bang theory. Contrary to what you may have read in your uh, grade school science book or life science, Creation was done intentionally. God, the creator of everything, had already purpose in his mind to create. The Bible said that God is love. And so what God's intention was for him to birth something into existence, something that, that, would, that, that remind him of himself, something that looked like himself, something that will speak to who he is. And I have a God from Genesis chapter one, between Genesis, Genesis chapter one to 25, uh, uh, verse one to 25, you hear all of the creation story within the first five days, then on the sixth day, God revealed his intention. His intention was not only to create all of these things, the trees, the flowers, and all the other things, that was not just God's intention. The true intention for creating those things was that he was about to do something spectacular. He was about to create, to create uh, uh, the highest form of creation, one that will represent him, if you will, an extension of himself. God created human being to be an extension of himself. Or the, another way to put it, God created us to be ambassadors of his on this planet. And so by doing so, on the sixth day, God created us, and then he expressed this said, let us give man dominion power. In other words, let us give him rulership for everything that we have created. In Psalm 8, our scripture for the week, in there, it said in verse six, it said that God placed all of his creation under the feet of man. Now notice what happened there, verse three. Uh, David one night went outside and looked while looking up into the sky. He noticed something that was so glorious. And I believe that what David saw is, is not the equivalent of what we see when we look up into the skies. I believe when David looked up into the sky, God revealed some, some thing to him that blew his mind without a telescope. David probably, God was able to reveal to David the vastness, the majestic of heaven. And David looked up and he saw that majestic. And when he saw everything and realized how God would take care of one little person like himself, David could not take it in. David said, oh my Lord, when I look into the, your heaven that your, that your fingers had created, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you visit him. And then the answer came to David even as he was speaking. And I don't believe David even understood it at the time because the answer was, for thou have made him man and woman, thou have made him mankind, thou have made him a little lower than angel. By the way, let me just fix something here. That is not what was said in the text. 
the original version of the text said, for thou have made him a little lower than Elohim. Now we read chapter one of Genesis. In Genesis, they said, in the beginning, Elohim, that's God. But when it came to Psalm 8, verse 3, uh, verse 4, the translator was so scared to, to translate it as God, because the text said, for thou hast made man a little lower than Elohim himself, than God himself. And, and, and because there were sinful men who were translating this thing, they said, no, this is too heavy to absorb. We were, we, we're just going to write angel. But when we were created from the hands of the master creator, from, 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 from his hand, we were created to be just a little lower than himself. In other words, when God created us, he made us the highest form of created being on this planet, which means that God's intention was not only that we will be an ambassador for him on this earth, but that his intention was that we were going to be the gods of the earth. Uh oh, I'm going somewhere with this. The gods of the earth? God created us and placed within us when he breathed in our nostril, he literally poured himself inside of us. So this, 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 the human vessel that you see inside the interior part of the human vessel is a depository of who God is. God poured himself into us. And he expected us to be the God of all creation. He placed all of his creation under our leadership, under our rulership. So as we worship God, now watch this now. The reason God said thou shalt not bow down to anything on this earth is because if you are the highest creator being on the planet, to bow down to anything is to bow down to something that is lower than you are. And since our text for the week said that we were made a little lower than God. That means every other thing we were made a little higher than they are. And they were supposed to pay homage to humanity. As we pay loyalty to God who was higher than us, and as we worship God, all of his creation was to respond to us the way we respond to God. And I, I remember Dr. Yansin was uh, alluded to this uh, one of the, the preaching he did. When we break the chain of command, when we stop trusting in God, every creation falls flat because the equation was loyalty to God, creation loyalty to man. There's loyalty to God, creation there's loyalty to man. So everything went wide. And this went on for about 4,000 years. 4,000 years. So how did they begin? The story is told, you all know the story, that after Adam and Eve were created, God has um, warned them about an arch enemy called Satan, who once upon a time was Lucifer. I don't have time to unpack that. But he came into this world. He sought, Ellen White said, he sought entering into all the other planets, but at the immigration checkpoint, nobody would let him in. And so he came on planet Earth, and he was at the immigration checkpoint. What he did was he told our forefathers and mother, Adam and Eve, he said, if you eat of the tree that God has instructed you not to eat of, you will be like God. Mankind was already like God. God made us God on this earth. Just in case you think I'm blowing this out of my mouth, Psalm 82 verse 6 said, ye are God's children. As a little, little uh, low G, ye are God's children of the most high God. And so when they, eat, when they ate of the fruit, immediately, Lucifer captured them. Satan captured humanity. Hence, we hear the word that Jesus Christ had to come to die for our sin. I remember having a conversation with some, some of my friend, my theologian friend one time, and I asked the question, which sin specifically did Jesus die for? Well, he died for all the sins. What are those sins? 
And some of them begin to name them murder, lying, cheating, stealing. And I said, what would you do? What would you say if I told you all of that are the result of sin, but not sin itself? Until we understand what the real sin was, it will always be difficult for us to be, to be, to, to be obedient and to know what it is that we're supposed to do. For 4,000 years, the devil, the enemy, devil, by the way, Diabolus, which is low, a downcast man, the, the Satan, Satan came and cast our, down, our mind down and make us start thinking less of ourselves. We were created a little lower than God himself. And Lucifer, when he lies to us, and when we embrace his lie, what he did, he captured us, we became prisoner of his for 4,000 years. Just for you to understand this implication, let me just give you a story. A group of scientists got together, they were studying behavior, behaviorists, they were still studying behavior. And so they took a bird and they put a the bird in this giant cage. And the cage on the top of the cage to put a glass ceiling on the top of the cage and the crystal clear glass ceiling. And after they put the bird, they locked the cage and immediately the bird looks up looked up and he, he saw the crystal blue sky and it began to escape. So when the bird flew up, it hit the glass ceiling and came back down. So after several attempts by the bird to escape, several attempts for many days, the bird finally concluded that there was an obstruction up there and that there was no way he can ever escape. And so the scientists, the experimenter, they went and removed the glass from the top. And then they begin, they took a stick and they begin to stick the bird in a cage. And they expected, as they stuck, stuck, uh, stuck the bird, they expected the bird to fly upward. But no, the bird has been conditioned into believing that there was an obstruction up there, even though that obstruction had been removed. And the bird will never fly upward. The bird will fly from one point of the cage to the next. So after several uh, uh, weeks in that cage, the scientists break the cage, and when they break the cage, the bird still believed in his mind that the cage was still there. And that bird will never go beyond the confine of where the cage was before. May I suggest to you that almost 6,000 years ago, the enemy of our soul called the devil, Satan, to be exact, when he captured humanity. He placed limitation. When God created us, he made us gods for this earth, which means God places, God placed no limitation on what we can achieve, no limitation on what we can be. It doesn't matter where you are born in this world. So long as you are here, there is no limitation. As a matter of fact, in order for you to be where you are now, you did some incredible stuff. Millions of sperm cells from your daddy rush to connect with your, mom, your mother's egg. And it were millions of them, but only one could enter. And if any other one of those million cells had entered, it would not have been you. It would have been a different person because each of those cells were carrying different DNA. But yours was the conqueror. Yours was the one that managed to go and connect with mother's air. And so you, from the very inception of your being, you defeated millions of other competitors in order for you to be who you are. Don't let anybody tell you that you cannot because you are already an overcomer. But 4,000 years into this cage, made us to place a limitation on our ability. And in a case, we begin to develop language and behavior that only can happen in a cage. We start think, talking about things that limitation. We start talking about fear. Those things never existed before. We start talking about self-preservation. We start talking about Killing, we start, we became limited because when this limitation was placed upon us, we felt that we couldn't do. The enemy lied to us that the farther we can go is up to the glass ceiling, 
and around the cage, we cannot go beyond the cage. We was locked in this box, if you will. And for 4,000 years, we were conditioned into believing that all that it is to life is to be in a box. We didn't realize that we were not box or cage animals. We were created with the freedom to fly. Even the stars were not supposed to be our limit. We were supposed to demand things to happen. And as we go through all this week, we will begin to unpack and you will see for yourself that you were not just fearfully and wonderfully made, but you were made to be God on earth. So 4,000 years later, during the 4,000 year period, God sent uh, all of his um, uh, prophets, all the prophet came, and each prophet came to give us some snip, snip view of what God wants of men to want us. Some of them they even understand. And with all the collective efforts of all of the of all of the prophets, we still did not grasp the full weight of what God is trying to instill into men, what God was trying to reveal to us. So at this time, this, this job, only God's son, only God himself could do it. So when the fullness of time come in Galatians, and when the fullness of time come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, that he may redeem those that are under the law. Now watch this now. When the fullness of time came, God sent his son, born in the cage, <laughs> hallelujah, to redeem those who have been conditioned in a cage to think of themselves as being limited, God went there. And Jesus went to the very heart of the cage called death. And when Jesus rose from death, he had the keys of life and death. And God shadowed the entire cage. Jesus shadowed the entire cage, break the glass ceiling, break the walls of the cage, and then said to us, you are now free to be who I created you to be. But no, we have been conditioned for so long that some of us will make the case life our primary life. And you see that in the way we pray. We pray that we are always begging God. And what God is trying to show to us is that we are one with him. And as we go on this week, you will see how that is so. Because there will be texts that I will show to you. And that's what Jesus said, if you believe in the work that I do, not only will you do the work that I do, but greater works than these you will accomplish. You were made, you and I, we were made for more. So the sin that Jesus died for was a sin of the limited view that we place on ourselves. Let me repeat that. The actual sin is our limited view of who we are. Our limited view, we believe, we exalt God, we believe that God can do anything but fail. But when it comes to us, we don't believe we can do anything. And that limitation is what Jesus came to erase, to obliterate, to remove it from our lives. Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus came to elevate our thought of who we really are. For almost 2,000 years after Jesus left, there are many of us who are still stuck in a cage. Many of us still fighting the same battle, the same war. The war is over. Dr. Janssen gave you the story of the, the Japanese soldier who thought that the war, World War II was over, he thought that the war was still going on and were hiding in cage from, from cave to cave. He was hiding everywhere because he didn't want to mingle with other people. He thought that his life was in danger. 20 some years 
after the war was over. These gentlemen still believed the war was going on. 2,000 years after Jesus had already won the war, we live our lives, even those of us in the church, we live our lives as if the war is still raging. The world is over and Jesus is the winner. And he passed that victory unto us. So when we pray, Paul said, come to the throne boldly. That's how we ought to do. Come to the throne boldly. And as we go through the rest of this week, we will show you how to do that. We will show you what real prayer is. That prayer was not intended for pleading, but for claiming. Prayer was not intended for begging, for, but for accepting. And to my brothers and sisters, listening to me from wherever you are, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are marvelously made. Your being is so huge, so huge, it cannot be compared to the universe. So let me close with it. Just to know the God we're talking about. He created a vast universe that David saw. And now, finally, that universe in it, there's one galaxy. There are hundreds of billions of galaxies, but the one we are on is called the Milky Way. And that Milky Way galaxy, you travel from one end of it to the other end, it will take you 100,000 light years. And light years is approximately six trillion miles that the light travel in one year. And it will take you 100,000 years to go across. That's the God we're talking about. But that same God, the creator of such ginormous, huge universe, contain himself into you as a vessel. So as we go our way this morning, where you are, remember, you are more. You were made for more. God bless you. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Dr. Main. Made for more, made for more. What a powerful message. Dr. Main, if you would please close for us um, this message with a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, what a beauty it is for us to fellowship together on this platform. Thank you for my brothers and my sisters. Thank you for who you are to us. And Lord, this is a prayer platform. And after this, there will be prayer going up. We already know that those prayers are answered, have already been answered before they are offered. Bless those who are leading all of us to the throne in Jesus' name. Amen.